Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. I said last week that God wants the prosperity of your spirit, of your soul, and of your physical body. And like I said, the prosperity of your spirit, no, the prosperity of your body is health. There are about seven of them. I mentioned only two, but I'm still on health. I said another prosperity of the body is burial. A body that is not buried is cursed. Not only buried, must be buried by the grace of God. So I said a body cremated is cursed. A body dumped is cursed. That body did not prosper. But today we're looking again at health. And last week I said two factors to consider in the prosperity of the body. You know, why we're saying this is because Enoch, 5,000 years, the rapture is yet to happen. And the rapture is still coming. We're awaiting the rapture. But then after the restitution of all things, which includes your spirit is saved, your soul, your body, the nation, and many other things will be restituted. He said, this Jesus, whom heaven must retain until the restitution of all things. He's not coming for a weak church. He's not coming for a church that wants to escape. He's coming for a triumphant, victorious church that will stamp his feet on the archives of Nigeria. I said, we have triumphed. He said, yes, now you're ready to come. Praise God. So when you see the redemption of Nigeria happening, then you can know the rapture is getting close. But it's not yet, not yet. No, 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 no. No. Praise God. And Enoch, about 6,000 years ago, was raptured by faith. A ceremony that is yet to take place. But by faith, he dragged the 6,000 years earlier. You know one of the things I found out what faith can do in Jeremiah 33? He said, if you can break my covenant of day and night, God boasted that nobody, he said in Genesis 8, 22, as long as the earth remained, seed time and harvest, day and night. It went on, summer and winter, it went on to say, then he said, if you can break my covenant of day and night, then you can stop David from having a light in Israel. Joshua broke the covenant of day and night. Meaning, Joshua can remove David's lineage and put his own. That's what it means, yes. Because he has broken the covenant by faith. Abraham, in Luke 16, said to the rich man in hell, he said, no one, there are things you will do that have never been done before. No one has crossed from there to here. And no one can. Jesus crossed it. Say there's a great gulf and everlasting gates. He removed the everlasting gate. He crossed that things have never been done. We will do it Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. At the rapture, our spirit is already redeemed. That's not when our spirit will be redeemed. Our souls is being redeemed by the renewing of our mind with the word of God. Our redemption of our soul is not automatic. It is gradual. So if you are caught off, that's why I said, if anyone dies on earth, you remember when Jesus said, Mary. Immediately she recognized by his voice. That means his voice has not changed. And the way he spoke did not change. So if you're an area boy and you get saved, you say, hey, boys. When you get to heaven, you say, hey, boys. That's how you'll be talking until they will renew your mind with the word. That was why in hell, the rich man was arrogant. He's always been arrogant on earth. How can you in hell ask Abraham to send somebody not to give you water, to dip his hand in your tongue? That's an insult. But that's the way he behaved on earth. It won't change, but our bodies will change. The Bible says it is corruptible. It will become incorruptible. It is weak, it will become strong. It may be sick, it will become healthy. What we want to do, we want to drag the redemption of the body 
from post-rapture to now. The way Enoch dragged the redemption of rapture 6,000 years behind. That is what I'm trying to give to you so that you can live in divine and perfect sound health and be above sickness and disease. The prosperity of the body. And there are things you must do. We said, number one, you must have the word of God and it must be the center of your life. That word God has spoken to you. That's the redemptive revelation. I said, number two, your countenance to life. Says a merry heart, do a good like what? Medicine. A broken heart destroyed the bones. Your countenance. Today, we're looking at diet and the redemption of our body. It's natural. Those of you who are science inclined know that a good diet, a balanced diet is a recipe for good health. That's why they tell you avoid this, avoid that, avoid this is for the sake of your health. Diet is important. Oh, there's something I wanted to mention, which I said last Sunday, and I've been challenged on it, and I want to address it again. Part of the redemption of the soul is emotional stability. And I said... If someone came to me, a lady, and said she was raped by a man of God, what would I do? And I told you what I said I would do, that if she's matured and um, matured in age and in life, I will ask her, what do you want? I said, if you want comfort and sympathy, go to social media. If you want justice, go to the police and tender your evidence. If you want healing, you go to God. If you want vengeance, I'll give her the condition. Then someone asked me, I said, okay, what if she's not matured and emotionally distraught? What would you recommend? Which is what I want to answer now. If someone told me she was raped by a so-called man of God, because no man of God will rape a woman. That's number one. No true man of God will rape any woman. A true man of God may fall into sin accidentally, but no true man of God will rape a woman. I said she was raped and she's emotionally distraught and needs my recommendation. Now, this would be my recommendation. Some time ago, I was watching Al Jazeera, and they were doing a documentary on men who are abused by Catholic priests. And there was this man they featured whose case went to court, and he was compensated with $300,000. And I listened to what he said. He said, I have been compensated but I am still not okay. I am not healed. And my life is still not straightened out. So if I'm to recommend, I say what is important for me to you is your healing and your restoration back into a state of grace so that you can move forward in life, accomplish purpose and destiny, and even with such cases and different people who have different cases in their lives. Yours is rape. Some people is abuse. Some people is financial loss of all their entire life savings. What is important is that you put that behind you. You get healed. Become whole and advance in life to fulfill your purpose and accomplish destiny. 99% of men and women whom you see today that are great and mighty, had one clog in their past, that if they dwell on it, they will never become what they are. So my priority is not justice. And so I will lead her to God for healing and leave the justice to God. That will be my recommendation. So I'll tell her, forget social media. It will not do you any good other than comfort and sympathy. That's not what you need. You need healing. I'm moving on. Justice, they will sentence him to about five years in prison. 
There was a man who went to a party. This is not what I want to share, but I need to say this to clear it. Because the question was asked for what I said last week Sunday. And while coming back in late in the night, he was a bit drunk. He ran over a young man trying to cross. And the young man died. When he saw the young man died, he drove and ran away. <clears throat> and that man died on that spot. Listen. The Bible says, God is not mocked. Don't be deceived. Anything any man sows, whether rape or whatever, he shall reap it. The harvest is not only for those who have sown into God's work. It's also for agents of darkness who have sown corruption. They will reap that corruption too. Ten years later, his first son came from abroad to do wedding. And on the eve of his bachelor's eve, he was coming. Had an accident on the same spot and he died on that spot. When they told him his son was dead, he said, where? When they told him the spot, he didn't cry, he kept quiet. He knew the God of justice of the earth, who cannot be bribed, has done his own too. So I will tell her, leave justice to God. If he's strong, if he knows police, if he knows all the judiciary, let him untwist them. Let's see how he will untwist God. And you do what? Move on. That will be my recommendation. I believe I've answered that question. Thank you. Back to what we're saying. We said diet is important to man as God has given divine guidance concerning it. In Exodus 16, from verse 1 to 12, he told the children of Israel when they complained about food, he said, I'll give you manna to the fool in the morning and bread in the evening. That means a full breakfast and a light dinner. So God recommends the cause of diet because it plays a major role in a sound and a healthy body. So God fed the children of Israel just twice a day. Now, I'm not going into the normal diet. I'm talking about heavenly diet, which is what I'm going to give you today. But there is a normal diet, carbohydrate, protein. Please, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a dietitian. I'm not going into that. But I want you to understand, diet plays a role in health. It plays a role in healing. Most drugs are made from leaves. Elijah was fed twice a day. 1 Kings 17, verse 1 to 6. Also, what we eat can affect our intellect, our countenance. Daniel chapter 1, from verse 3 to 16. Daniel chapter 1, from verse 3 to 16. The Bible says, Daniel ate, he chose not to eat the delicacies of the king's table, but rather chose, maybe I just need to read it, Daniel chapter 1. From verse 3 to 16. Oh, long reading. Um, I guess I'll jump because of time. Now, verse 8, Daniel proposed in his heart, he was offered delicacies. He proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the Enoch that he might not defile himself. Now, God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the Enoch. And the prince of Enoch said to Daniel, I fear my lord the king. God appointed your meat and your drink, for why should he see your faces worse, looking than the children which are of your sword? Then what shall you make of me to endanger my head to the king? Then said Daniel to Mersha, the prince of the Enoch, had said over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, prove us, I beseech you, ten days. Give us just vegetables to eat and water to drink. And if our countenance be looked upon, and upon the children that eat of the king's table, and you see the difference, they deal appropriately. So he consented to them in this matter and proved them ten days. At the end of ten days, their countenance appeared fairer, fatter, in flesh than all the children, which he did eat the portion of the king's meat. So vegetables and fruits gives you a better countenance and a better health than meat and wine. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? 
Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Kayode Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obanikoro, Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium, Suruleri, Lagos. Get a copy today. So diet and body physiology, the two play a major role in health. Now, in my personal um, situation, the Lord Jesus appeared to me once. And I thought when he appeared to me, I thought he would say, take your staff, cross the Jordan and possess. I thought that's what he would say. Possess and raise the dead. And he said, keep your weight under this number. I was shocked. He said, make sure you don't go beyond this in your weight. Wow. You mean Jesus, the son of the most high God, appears to you in glory and is talking to you to keep your weight at a particular number. Now, for my own body physiology, that weight is important. After a while, another time he appeared again. He said, I want you to, from now on, cut down on sugar. He didn't say, don't take sugar. Cut down on sugar and red meat. That is a prescription for me. It's not for everybody. Did you hear me? It's not for everybody. Samson's hair is not to be shaven. They didn't say everybody should not shave. It's only Samson. Do you hear me? From today... The Lord will visit you Amen. and give you the right recipe Amen. that will be adequate for your body, biochemistry, Amen. and physiology Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. I know your amen is weak because you don't understand science. Amen. Your body has a chemistry and physiology. Some have high metabolic rate, and so there are certain foods they can eat. Some have low metabolic rate. There are certain foods they should avoid. Based on your own body system, the Lord will give you appropriate information to manage divine health in your life in Jesus' name. Eating appropriately is also a sign of wisdom. In 1 Kings chapter 10 from verse 1 to 5, three things the queen of Sheba saw with Solomon. The way he dressed, the way he ate, and the manner his servants attended to issues. And the way he answered questions so simply. So if you're not eating right, it means you lack wisdom. So if you are 55, 60, 65, and all you are taking is cake and ice cream every day, it's not that you have sweet tooth, you lack wisdom. Don't use sweet tooth to cover what it is. It is void of wisdom. Am I complicating? Now, I met a man once who said, my mother was 80, and there's no day she didn't drink a bottle of Pepsi. That was adequate for her. It may not be adequate for you but it was adequate for her. That's why I said, the Lord must give you your own, and he will Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. From today, you will have it Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. A good diet can lead to healing if a person is sick. Food is used both to nourish, to strengthen, to revitalize, and to renew. Psalm 104 I read Psalm 104, just verse 15. Psalm 104, verse 15. It says, It maketh wine that maketh glad the heart of man, and all to make his face to shine, and bread which strengthens man's heart. Verse 16. The trees of the Lord are full of sap, the cedars of Lebanon, which he had planted. So, God caused these things for the service of man. Sorry, verse 14. He caused grass to grow for the cattle and herbs for the service of man that he may bring forth food out of the earth. So the herbs is for service, which includes healing, revitalization, renewal, and strengthening. We also have the same scripture in 2 Kings 20 which from verse 1 to 7, but I won't look at that. In 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 23, Paul told Timothy, I don't know what the problem was with his stomach. He said, use a little wine for thy stomach's sake. So wine was being used to treat. Wine was being used what? To treat. So if it does like that in the natural, 
Now, if you have the blessed spiritual wine, it can be used to treat. If you have ulcer, you have everything in your tummy, when you take that blessed wine from the Lord, the one he's giving to Timothy is not the one from the Lord. It's the one from the earth. We're going to take the one from the Lord today. And it will take care of all these Amen. issues. In the name of Jesus. You are living here perfectly healed. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Every issue of health in your life will be adequately addressed today. If it is strength, you will have the strength. Amen. If it is healing, you'll be healed. Amen. If it's renewal, you'll be renewed. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. The Passover is celebration of a spiritual event through feeding. There are spiritual events that does not involve feeding. Some involve fasting. But the Passover was instituted in Exodus 12 when the children of Israel were delivered out of Egypt. It's a festival instituted by God for Israel at the time of the Exodus, in order to commemorate Israel's deliverance and the saving of their firstborn son, which is struck dead in the land of Egypt. And so it is a meal. And so Jesus said when they asked him, where do we celebrate the Passover? He said, look for this, look for this. Tell the owner of the house to prepare the chamber where I will celebrate the Passover with my disciples, which means I will eat bread and wine with my disciples. Now, you, like I said, natural meal can give you good health. Wrong diet can give you bad health. However, the meal from the Almighty, the divine Passover, the bread that is blessed, the water that is blessed, when you consume it, it will, in Exodus 23, 25, this is what the Bible says it will do. Exodus 23, Verse 25, he says, you shall serve the Lord. Then he will bless your bread. So it's no longer ordinary bread. Ordinary bread is what he gave them in the wilderness. He said he gave them bread to the fool. But this is a blessed bread. It's different. He will bless your bread and your water. When you eat and drink this water and eat this bread, he says sickness will be taken away from you. In Ezekiel 47, he's still talking about food. Ezekiel 47, from verse 6. He said to me, son of man, have you seen this? Then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. When I returned, behold, the bank of the river. Now this is a vision. Were many trees on one side and on the other. Then he said to me, these waters issue out towards the east country. They go down into the desert, into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the waters shall be healed. It shall come to pass that everything that liveth, which moveth, wherever the rivers shall come, shall live. And there shall be a great multitude of fish, because these waters shall come. Now, these are not ordinary waters. When they hit the wilderness, it blossoms. When they hit bad water, it gets healed. When they enter, fish blossom. It's called blessed, special. I'm not talking of water that you'll be selling. No, please don't confuse that with me. No, 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 no. We didn't go and fetch water from anywhere for anybody to be selling. No, it's a specially blessed meal, a specially blessed water that's doing wonders. That if you drink from it, if it enters into your body, your life will change. I'll jump to verse 12. By the river upon the bank thereof on this side, and on that side shall grow all trees for meat, whose leaves shall not fade, neither shall the fruits thereof be consumed. He shall bring forth new fruit according to his months, because their waters they issue out of the sanctuary, and the fruit shall be for meat, and the leaf for medicine. He buttress that in Revelation chapter 22. Say that's the Old Testament. All right, let's go to the New Testament. From verse 1, Revelation 22. He showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, on either side of the river, was the tree of life, which bears twelve manner of fruits, and yielded a fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. That's a meal. 
Natural vegetable can help, but it may not heal some diseases. This one, they didn't say it's limited by any disease. It will heal. So there are meals that will heal. The one you will take this morning will heal. Amen. Because it's not ordinary meal. It's a specially blessed meal. In 1 Kings 19, 1 Kings chapter 19, Elijah, I'll read from verse 1 to 8. He had told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, with her, how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, So let the gods do to me and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. When he saw it, he arose, went for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. He himself went a day's journey to the wilderness, came and sat down under the jumper tree. Why did he come to see that he was tired? From a day's journey. Please, take note. A day's journey, he was tired and sat under the tree. He requested for himself that he might die and said, it is enough now, oh Lord. Take my life, for I'm not better than my father's. He was so tired and so sick that he wished death from traveling a day's journey. As he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, an angel touched him and said, arise and what? Eat. Now, here is food to address tiredness, weakness, and a failing health. It looked behold, it was a cake. It's not a heavenly meal that we can't describe. It's a cake. Baking on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. It's always a meal and water. He ate and drank. Lay him down again. Then the angel of the Lord came again the second time, touched him and said, Arise, eat, for the journey is too great for thee. He arose, did eat and drink. Then he went in the strength of that meat 40 days and 40 nights. In natural food, he went one day, he was tired. In super food, he went 40 days and 40 nights. And he was not tired. I believe you have been blessed by that message. And I know your faith has been built up. And I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you don't give up. Faith works. It's working and it will work in your life. God bless you.